Jamaica's human capital is the backbone of our economy. And the government of Jamaica is invested in ensuring that they are empowered through education. The Scholarship and Assistance Unit at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service administers several scholarship opportunities to help public servants to achieve their educational goals. Hello, I'm Daniel Pasley and welcome to Finance Matters. In today's episode, I'll be talking to Mr. Donovan Leon, Chief Workforce Planning Officer of the Scholarship and Assistance Unit. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow the Ministry of Finance on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to see all the episodes and highlights. Thank you, Mr. Leon, for coming on the program. Uh, thank you for having me. Now, what is the role of the Scholarship and Assistance Unit? Uh, so, the Scholarships and Assistance Unit within the Strategic Human Resource Management Division of the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service is the arm that facilitates um, training and development for the public sector at large. Okay. Um, also, we also facilitate training for ordinary citizens. And so, we are in a very pivotal role in coordinating some of the training activities that we receive from our international partners. And some of the international time. partners could include? So you're talking about Cuba, um, China, Serbia, um, from a number of our developmental partners, inclusive of those that we have um, local counterparts, so like JICA, which is a Japan International Cooperation Agency. You All have right. the India um, um, High Commission, a lot of them. So we have roles, we have sculpture opportunities that are fully funded, that is administered through us, mm -hmm. as well as capacity building initiatives. So for example, we will have a training in a specific area, like for example, solid waste management. And right. Our role is to coordinate those training activities with those entities within the public service that has a mandate. So naturally, like National Works Agency or National Solid Waste Agency, um, would be some of our picks for a course like that. So we normally coordinate those opportunities to ensure that there's training for all. So in other words, the scholarship and assistance unit aligns the various scholarship programs to the strategic goals of each public sector organization, basically. Yeah, more or, so or role. 2030. Right. Um, as per the national um, goals, um, you find that we are very um, highly invested and integrated in this um, the idea of facilitating training of course you know that there's a very big transformation effort by the GOJ and a part of that is learning and development so we are one of those prongs in facilitating learning and development through our international partners so let us know a little bit more about some of the scholarship opportunities that is provided that are provided all right so one of the mainstays that um, we have is normally the Cuba scholarship. That's the one for medicine. We normally get on average maybe about 70 to 80 applicants per year for about five spaces. So you know, it's highly wow. competitive. Yeah. Um, we have the Chinese um, scholarship, which normally for various thematic areas, medicine being one of them, engineering, if I recall correctly. And um, of course, you have the Serbian scholarship and from time to time, I think the most recent, we had one from Russia. Uh, we currently have about one student still completing studies there. And so, I mean, as I said before, it's opportunities from all over. But it should be noted that once we get these opportunities, that they are competitive in nature. So you have to come with your A game. That is, especially for like students who are looking for leaving from high school right. to go into the tertiary education, you have to have competitive grades. And not only that, we also encourage you to have a high level of um, community involvement or some indication. Because one of the things that we find is important is that not having the academic progress only, but you must have a sense of civic duty. So you must have a holistic approach. Holistic approach. So in terms of some of the grants that are provided, I know that there, are, that there may be one for public officers and children of, of public officers. Could you explain a little bit more about that? Sure. So under the heads of agreement arrangement um, between the government and the respective unions, um, 
in that contract document, the government and the unions collectively have bargained for certain benefits, uh, which includes elements of education under which the public sector workers fall under and the children of public sector workers, which you just um, described. And so under those two arrangements, a uh, public sector worker can apply up to for 150000 towards their educational assistant. It is a one-way flow, so there's no payback. Right, right. Um, it's really the government's you know, um, commitment to say that I'm helping you to develop yourself further. And if I am to add some numbers to it, since the last contract period between 2017 um, up to 2021, which was subsequently renewed, um, under the public sector workers, we assisted some 4,000 public sector workers to wow. the tune of over $450 million. Wow. wow. And so it's a real significant commitment from the government in terms of, and it's, it's grant funds, so there's no... You don't have to worry about paying back a loan. It's not, it's not a loan. <laughs> and so, um, and it's all for all areas. So it's from CXEs, and mind you, you do have persons in the public service that are still doing CXEs. Okay. You have going right up to masters and PhDs, as well as professional exams. So, Mr. Leon, tell us a little bit more about the ministry's flagship scholarship program. Ah, uh, uh, so um, in July. 2020, um, the ministry had embarked on um, this very important flagship scholarship, dubbed um, the Marcus Garvey Public Sector Scholarship Program, which is aimed at helping our public sector workers to advance into high level studies, that is graduate studies, whether it be a master's or the PhD. And um, it is intended to one, facilitate and unearth latent talent within the public service. Um, it also is helping to direct those skills um, to also equip the public service with those kind of skill sets that will be required in the future. Mm -hmm. And so from time to time, there are some thematic areas such as education, um, agriculture, logistics, um, to name a few, that we have fully funded scholarships under these thematic areas right. for persons within the public service to apply for. Of course, it's a competitive process. Of course, of course. And so um, we have very good public sector workers, and so it's really an opportunity for them to advance themselves. And the reason why it's so important is that as part of the transformation effort, the government has definitely recognized that there's a need for um, a transformation of skills, uh, transformation of how we do business and the level of investment Definitely. that is required in the human capital development. And so this program is to the tune of $1 billion over five years. You heard that, folks, $1 billion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a very significant investment. Um, and then uh, we expect some 150 public servants, or public sector workers, to be trained under this program. And is there a bonding policy involved? Naturally, naturally. So um, once you come under the program, you're bonded for five years. Okay. Um, within the public service or the public sector. And again, I must add, uh, there's, a, there's a narrative that exists that the, um, the bonding policy is some sort of shackle. <laughs> no. Um, it's a trade-off. You get this kind of investment. All we're asking for you to do is just give the time and, and to show and to make some... Um, to you know, transfer the skills that you've garnered within the public service. Exactly. And then if you really follow the mechanics of the bonding policy and um, how it is structured, you find that there are more things for you than against you. Wow. So there are a wealth of scholarship opportunities being provided by the Scholarship and Assistance Unit. Yeah, we are facilitators for the scholarship and we, from time to time, look out for new opportunities. Just recently, we were invited, we were invited to the um, summit in UK, virtually, um, that we participated with some schools from as far as Australia, US, um, Canada, Japan, China, you name it, and of course, one of the things is that because the country itself has been performing well in terms of our macroeconomic indices, um, a lot of When you talk about macroeconomic indices, just break so that down example, a little bit more. The fact that um, if you recall, um, 
our honorable minister's um, excerpt, um, I think it was in I, the IDB, it came in the newspaper about Jamaica's um, excellence in standing to, in sticking to a very strict um, debt sustainability program and also being able to um, be a beacon to other Caribbean okay. territories yes. that have similar economic hardships. And because of that, we have been seen as, you know, a leader in that department. And all, but as a result of that, a lot of attention has been turned to Jamaica because on the flip side, they said, boy, your indices look good. You are in a position to afford it. And so what we find is that a number of foreign schools come to us and say, well, um, you know, we they want to invest. That we want to invest and create right. partnerships with you um, for your potential, for your students. And so we were invited to the BMI in um, that summit in, I think it was July of this year, which we met with a number of um, school stakeholders. And so we're trying to, you know, broaden the scope of opportunities because we know that scholarship opportunities are like scarce resources. Yeah, yeah. And so um, the more, the larger our ecosystem of actors, if we're not able to assist it directly, we should be in a position to give you strong information that can aid you in your developmental goals. And if you want to find out some more information about some of the scholarship opportunities that are facilitated by the Scholarship and Assistance Unit, how can we do so? So it's um, at the ministry's website, www.mof.gov.jm forward slash scholarships. So from time to time, we once we are in receipt of invitations from our partners, we normally um, have them listed on our site. Sometimes we also go to the print. And of course, our relevant media handles, our social media handles, they're also posted there from time to time. Um, we are, though, in the effort of trying to coordinate with our partners so there's a more predictable pattern. Um, so persons can guard them, you know, get the list of stuff together um, when these scholarship opportunities come around because we really want to see greater uptake, we really want to see greater levels of participation and that can only happen through greater access to information and so we are trying to ensure that we have information that is timely, that is accurate and will help you, um, the prospective student, to get as much information as required to advance your um, educational goals. Well, thank you, Mr. Leon, for coming on the program and sharing a wealth of information. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on Finance Matters. Remember to join us next week for another exciting episode. I'm Daniel Pasley, and have a great day. <laughs>